Um, we do critical internet research since 2004. Our method is to build up sustainable networks around emerging topics. So we start very early in the process and what we try to do is both to reflect on the core concepts of the technologies. Eh? For instance, now, of course, an emerging technology would be Bitcoin, and cryptocurrencies and the blockchain, just as an example. Eh? But uh, yeah, they, they, come and, they come and go. We build communities around these topics of people that are often dispersed. They're in this country, that city, this department, right? Internet research and special critical uh, approaches, they are not very well organized. They are not concentrated, right? So the indi often individual artists, designers, programmers, researchers, cultural producers, they're uh, everywhere. So these networks, they're very important for uh, those people who work at the forefront of these technologies and who do not only want to say hallelujah uh, to the business concept, but we ask uh, questions. So the aim of these uh, networks um, is to, let's say, build on the innovation and at the same time ask critical questions. Uh, for many people, these two things, uh, they don't go together. So you do either one or you do the other. But for the internet generation, for people who develop stuff, huh, it's, a, it's a different thing. This view huh, is a view of an outsider. For us, when, you know, when you're involved, huh, we claim the freedom to ask critical question as developers, as innovators, as entrepreneurs as precarious workers in this field, right? So that's the aim of the Institute of Network Cultures. Yeah, I would make a distinction between the classic forms of e-learning, which are often closed environments, quite classic in its structure of what the module wants to achieve, how the students are uh, supervised and then at the end uh, tested uh, in, and then uh, get uh, a degree, right? This is kind of a, a classic uh, approach of online uh, education. This has been around ever since there were uh, computer networks, right? So the idea of online learning is at least 40, if not 50 years old. Uh, and the models that are used are rather um, yeah, conventional. Uh, what we do is we develop uh, educational material, research, that can be used by a variety uh, of educational uh, institutions, can, but can also be used by professionals, by amateurs, by people who work, uh, you know, in public opinion or uh, people who work in, in, in policy. Uh, so um, for us, the material that we um, produce, for instance, uh, the critique of the search engine, the critique of uh, online video, uh, our investigations in the architecture of social media, these are all broad themes that, um, you know, uh, are really about the communication of millions of people, if not billions of people. Uh, remember the 2.2 billion users of Facebook, right? We're talking here about very, very large uh, constituencies. I have a son. He's uh, 16 years old. He's, uh, he's a DJ. He's very much uh, into dubstep. And um, he gets his uh, music technology education uh, almost exclusively via YouTube tutorials. And I have seen over the last three or four years uh, when he started and uh, became, uh, you know, a very skilled 
uh, Ableton, uh, you know, technician and uh, you know, how uh, kids these days master the technology and uh, I didn't interfere in it too much. So I really observed uh, carefully how uh, this works. And I'm astonished uh, about the, the kind of the concentration that he was able to uh, achieve because he had a very specific question. He put in the question in the search engine or already knew which channel where to look, then went to it and looked from the beginning to the end to the tutorial and uh, got the answer, right? Uh, in a way that I maybe would not be able to do because I would probably go to uh, you know a search engine uh, try to formulate a question see if Wikipedia or something else some other technical website would uh, give the answer so the uh, the visual strength of the instruction via the online video I think really appeals to young people often you know, these videos, they're well done. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not amateur-like per se. And of course, it's not professional television, right? But the information uh, is very precise. And often, of course, we don't look at the presenter, but they take us directly to the screen. Yeah? And this is, of course, also uh, an important part of the instruction, right? It is not about the visual presentation of somebody who sits in front of you being nice or sexy or you know or trying to sell you something no we're talking when about these inst instructional videos about really uh, very very uh, precise details that the instructor takes you step by step through it and i think this is uh, yeah a, a revolution in um, in education Maybe uh, you are looking at a video abstract right now, right? This is an abstract. This is a promotional video of my book uh, in, in Turkish language that uh, just came out. So uh, I have to reflect here on the medium uh, myself, right? So I, I'm uh, familiar, of course, with this uh, topic, uh, with this uh, genre. Um, yeah. I can't really say that there's much wrong with it. Um, maybe, you know, we have to reflect on the culture uh, of, of promotion, uh, eh? of, uh, of public relations. Uh, and, and I have to maybe ask a more broader question. Why so many of the channels on the Internet these days are all about self-promotion, right? And uh, in a way, this is, uh, this is a pity because they, in a way, are the shadow of the topic we talked about earlier. Because the instructional videos are very detailed, right? And they're very focused on problem solving. However, the promotional video, huh, they are not. Huh? They kind of are... Um, yeah, making some kind of appetite and uh, yeah, they're, not, they're kind of an introduction, but not really. I haven't, you know, in this video said anything yet about the content of this book. Yeah? I should have, right? But that's the essence of promotional material.